We're asked to use polynomial fitting to find the formula for the nth term of the sequence a sub n where n is greater than or equal to zero, which starts three, six, 12, 22, 37, 58, and so on. The closed formula for a sequence will be a degree k polynomial if and only if the sequence is delta k constant, meaning the kth sequence of differences is constant. Once we know a sequence is delta k constant, we know we can determine the closed formula by determining a degree k polynomial. We'll determine the coefficients of the closed formula by setting up and solving a system of equations. Let's begin by determining the sequence of first differences. Six minus three is three, 12 minus six is six, 22 minus 12 is 10, 37 minus 12 is 15, and 58 minus 37 is 21, and so on. We don't have a constant sequence, and therefore we now find the sequence of second differences, which is the sequence of the differences of the first differences. Six minus three is three, 10 minus six is four, 15 minus 10 is five, 21 minus 15 is six, and so on. Notice the sequence of second differences is arithmetic, and therefore the sequence of third differences is going to be a constant sequence. The sequence of third differences is four minus three, which is one, five minus four, which is one, six minus five, which is one, and so on. Notice the sequence of third differences is a constant sequence, which means the original sequence is delta three constant, indicating the closed formula is a degree three polynomial. We now know the closed formula is going to be in the form of a sub n equals a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. We now need to set up and solve a system of equations to determine a, b, c, and d. To do this, we'll use the first four terms of the original sequence. Each term will give us one equation. We know a sub zero is equal to three, a sub one is equal to six, a sub two is equal to 12, and a sub three equals 22. We begin with a sub zero. When determining a sub zero, we know that n is equal to zero. Subbing zero for n into the closed formula, we have a times the cube of zero plus b times the square of zero plus c times zero plus d must equal a sub zero, which we know is equal to three. Simplifying, we get d equals three. Next, we use a sub one, which is equal to six. In determining a sub one, we know n is equal to one. Subbing one for n into the closed formula, we have a sub one equals a times the cube of one plus b times the square of one plus c times one plus d, but we know d is three, which must equal six, which is a sub one. Simplifying, we have a plus b plus c plus three equals six. Subtracting three on both sides, we have the equation a plus b plus c equals three. Next, we move on to a sub two. When determining a sub two, n is equal to two. A sub two is equal to a times the cube of two, plus b times the square of two, plus c times two, plus d, but again, d is equal to three, equals 12. Simplifying, we have eight a plus four b plus two c plus three equals 12. Subtracting three on both sides, we have the equation eight a plus four b plus two c equals nine. And now for the last equation, we use a sub three, where a sub three is equal to 22. When determining a sub three, we know n is equal to three. A sub three equals a times the cube of three, plus b times the square of three, plus c times three, plus d, which is three, which must equal a sub three, which is 22. Simplifying, we have 27a plus nine b plus three c, plus three equals 22. Subtracting three on both sides, we have the equation 27a plus nine b plus three c equals 19. And now we need to solve the system of equations. Notice in the first equation, we already know d is equal to three, and therefore we can just focus on the three equations containing a, b, and c, and solve the system. And there's a variety of ways to solve the system. I'm gonna go ahead and solve the system using an augmented matrix, and then writing the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. So again, here we have our three equations. When setting up the augmented matrix, we do have a choice as to whether to include the first equation or not. We don't need to include it because we know d is equal to three, but I'm gonna go ahead and show both setups. If we do include the equation d equals three, then we have a four by five augmented matrix where we have the coefficients of a in the first column, coefficients of b in the second column, coefficients of c in the third column, the coefficients of d in the fourth column, and the constants in the fifth column. The equation d equals three is the row zero, 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 one, three. The equation a plus b plus c equals three is the row one, 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 zero, three. 
the equation 8a plus 4b plus 2c equals 9 is the row 8, 4, 2, 0, 9. And the last equation, 27a plus 9b plus 3c equals 19, is the last row of 27, 9, 3, 0, 19. So again, if we include the equation d equals 3, we have a 4 by 5 augmented matrix. Writing this in reduced row echelon form, which is shown here on the right, we know a is equal to 1 sixth, b is equal to 1, c is equal to 11 sixths, and d is equal to 3, which we already knew. And I also want to show the setup if we don't include the equation d equals 3. If we don't include the equation d equals 3, then we have a 3 by 4 augmented matrix, where the first row 1113 represents the equation a plus b plus c equals 3. The second row of 8429 represents the equation 8a plus 4b plus 2c equals 9. And the third row of 279319 represents the last equation. Writing this augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, we get the same results. We just don't have d equals 3 as a row in the augmented matrix. The first row indicates a equals 1 sixth. The second row indicates b equals 1. The third row indicates c equals 11 sixths. So if we use the second method, we do need to remember that d equals 3. So whichever method we use, we now know a equals 1 sixth, b equals 1, c equals 11 sixths, and d equals 3, which is what we need to determine the closed formula. We now sub these values into a sub n equals a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d, which gives us a sub n equals 1 sixth n cubed plus 1 n squared or just n squared plus 11 six n plus 3. This is the closed formula for our original sequence. I hope you found this helpful.